What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast, and today's video is going to be a very unique one as I'll be showcasing the best battles from a crazy 16 game win streak I had in the Open Great League running Hyper Beam Galarian Weezing as part of this triple silly hat theme team, but also showcasing some viewer submitted battles from the creator of the same team. Now to clarify, Gummy Wormy and submitted some battles with this team within the first few days of the season and I really like the theme but I wanted to prioritise showcasing newly buffed Pokemon during that first week so I suggested that they run on this team when the Great League came back around. Unfortunately they haven't submitted any more battles since then and having taken a look at their submission in full there were really only a handful of battles that were worth showcasing so I gave the team a try myself just to try and bolster up the video a little bit and I accidentally went on my longest win streak of the season with an 18 and 2 record overall. It definitely wasn't my intention to steal the limelight away from Gummy Wormian and I do feel a little bit bad about it but I still will be showcasing some of their battles towards the end of the video so with that being said let's just get into the question of the day. What do you think is the best core breaker for the current Open Great League meta? Let me know in the comment section down below and with that being said, let's get into the battles now. Alright, so going into the first battle, we need Galarian Weezing into a Licky Tongue. And it's worth mentioning, I actually wasn't intending to run Hyper Beam at all. I was trying to get the exact same moveset that Gummy Wormian was running in their submission. But unfortunately, I ran out of charge DMs, got stuck with Hyper Beam. But I figured since we got it, we might as well full send the Hyper Beam in this first matchup. And it does huge damage up against the Licky Tongue. Of course, don't really expect them to shield that up because they are very bulky. And you can see, even though that's a Hyper Beam, it still doesn't do anywhere near enough damage to one shot them. But what we can do is come in with the Crocolore. I'm just going to go for a full Incinerate Farm down here. We can tank two Body Sams and we will just narrowly get the Incinerate Farm down. The opponent comes in with a Wigglytuff. Honestly, I kind of just panicked there through whatever charge loop I could tap on and unfortunately it was the Resisted Crunch but now we have a little bit more time. We know we can just go for a Disarming Voice and the opponent actually shields that up there. So we're going to wait out the switch clock as we did swap out of that lead matchup, come in with the Ludicolo, and I'm honestly not entirely sure who wins CMP in this matchup, but it turns out it is Ludicolo, which is lucky, as we go for the leaf stop and the opponent no shields, it one shots the Wigglytuff, they come in with Annihilate, and at this point I realise I can't throw a charge reef whilst my attack is debuffed there, so we're going to rank some energy, come in with the Weezing, and now we can go for a play rough, play rough will of course KO from this range, so the opponent will be using their final shield, they're actually going to over farm significantly in this matchup here honestly if they went for the full farm down that could have been a little bit scary but they do end up throwing a charge move which means they're not going to make it to back to back night slashes i can safely shield the first charge move and we can go for a leaf storm and leaf storm of course will certainly be enough damage to take out the annihilate and i'm able to take that game so GG's to the opponent there, into next game we see Galarian Weezing into Shadow Dragonair and I will mention that I actually won a lot of leads with this team, got very lucky so typically when you go on a 16 game win streak it's not just like fighting back from really bad leads all the time, you, you are typically going to win most of those leads there, that's how you get on such a good winning streak but we're certainly going to take that, we go for the play rough, taking out the Shadow Dragonair and we're only making it to one charge move so once again might as well full send a Hyper Beam but the opponent is going to respect the damage and they also come out with a ton of energy which is very scary for my backline as they can hit both pokemon for super effective damage we are going to call that they're just baiting and it is an aerial ace bait which is huge for me at this point i will be shielding i don't care if they bait this time around they actually full send the dig so really nice calls there we're now going to go for a crunch and because they full send that dig i'm actually going to make it to a second crunch before they make it to dig number two and i'm expecting it's probably going to be like a lantern or a whiskash in the back but on the odd chance that it's something else I will just shield this up because Ludicolo has a very dominant matchup up against both of those Pokemon. Turns out it is the Lantern, so didn't need the Crocolore, but we played it safe. And at this point, of course, we can live any one charge move that the Lantern throws, but I can't say the same for Lantern with this matchup here as we go full sending the Leaf Storm. And Leaf Storm one shots the Lantern, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there into next game and another great lead for the Galarian Weezing. We're leading into Annihilate once again. The opponent's going to say swap into Dugong now, of course. We don't have the best response here because even though we've got a fire type in the back which is going to resist the ice damage, they do have coverage with Drill Run, but I'm going to swap, catch the move here. And this is very risky, but I'm expecting the opponent to bait with an icy wind. That is, of course, resisted on our fire type. 
At this point, I realize I actually can live a drill run. So I know shield once again, but the opponent is going to full send the drill run. And what this does mean is that, unfortunately, since we are debuffed, Crunch isn't going to two-shot them. And we don't get a debuff to their, to their defense on the first move. So they will actually regain switch advantage. Although I'm figuring if we have a massive energy advantage with either Pokemon, it honestly doesn't matter too much. So we're going to come in with the Weezing. I will respect the damage. They do bait once again with an Icy Wind. I'm not sure if I can go for the full farm down there, so instead we swap, we bank a ton of energy on our Weezing, come in with the Ludicolo, and the opponent is still going to have to respect the damage coming from a Leaf Storm in this matchup. So they go for a Night Slash there, no reason to shield that, they didn't farm up to a potential Shadow Ball. Leaf Storm, on the other hand, is going to nuke the Annihilate, but they've got a Charge Bug in the back, and actually... This is quite scary, but I already recognize my win condition here. Let the x go through and full send the Hyper Beam. They've already seen play rough. They're definitely not going to expect a huge Hyper Beam connecting. And at this point, I can just safely shield whatever they throw. They might be at back-to-back -back moves, but it doesn't matter. The Fairy Wind will go through. It takes out the Charger Bug, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there into the next game, another positive lead matchup for us, assuming this is Charm and it is Charm, so of course if they are running Side Shock, that's going to be quite troublesome, but the opponent doesn't even farm up to it, throwing a Weather Ball after 6 Charms, we are now once again just going to full send the Hyper Beam, might as well go for it, and Hyper Beam does connect, it does huge damage, taking out the Ninetales after one more Fairy Wind, and the opponent comes in with a Bastiodon, so of course don't want my Crocolot aligned to the Bastiodon, so just going to stay in, the opponent actually panics and shields their Bastion on there. I suppose after getting nuked by a Hyper Beam, you probably do want to respect the damage there, but of course, Hyper Beam is double resisted, so maybe expecting overheat, but either way, that's still not going to do that much damage up against the very bulky Bastion on. As you can see, even a super effective Scald doesn't hit particularly hard, but we do debuff their attack, so I can no shield the next Stone Edge. Stone Edge, not going to do enough damage here, and at this point, I'm going to bank 100 energy, then swap into my Crocolore, get an energy advantage, and they've got a Trevenant in the back, so this is going to be game over for the opponent. The opponent recognizes that instantly, so they save me some time and they just concede the match. So we go 5-0 in that set. I'm not showcasing every single battle in the 16 game win streak, but into the next battle, we see another positive lead. The opponent's going to say swap into Talonflame, and once again, I don't have the greatest response here. Of course, Ludicolo, you think running Bubble is probably a good matchup because they can just go for those flame charges. It's actually not, not that uh, good for us. It's very close, and with a slight energy advantage, they're typically going to win that in the two shield scenario so I definitely don't want that we're going to go for the crunch here grab a shield grab both shields probably but the opponent will just be able to go for a full incinerate farm down which certainly isn't ideal for us as they've still got energy to throw a charge move immediately into my Kalar and Weezing I don't think they're quite in play rough range here but unfortunately we don't get the fairy win through as we come in now we'll make it to a hyper beam I figured at this point they probably are in play rough range so we take the risk we go for the resisted play rough and it does take them out they come in with us one but we're going to swap straight away into Ludicolo. I'm thinking a Leaf Storm will probably one-shot them from this range, so we are full sending it. And Leaf Storm does take out the Ninetales, and at this point, we can live either a Hydro Cannon or an Earthquake reasonably comfortably. So we are going to get hit with a Sludge Wave, though, and now things aren't looking too good for us. The opponent makes it to yet another charge move. This is going to be a Hydro Cannon. It barely doesn't take us out, though, and we're able to make it to a Hyper Beam. Hyper Beam one-shots the Swampert, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to that opponent there, that was a crazy turn of events towards the end of that battle, but into the next battle, another positive lead for the Galar and Weezing. Honestly, I had the algorithm working for me today, let me know in the comments if you do believe in the algorithm. Uh, that's going to spark a lot of controversy. I don't know why I said that, honestly. But here we are once again. Going to try and full send a Hyper Beam. Hyper Beam is going to grab a shield, unfortunately. Now we're going to swap into our hard answer in the form of Crocolore. They throw awkward timing there, so we actually get a full incinerate in for free. And I figured at this point, they're probably in crunch range. So we're going to go and fire off the crunch. But Crunch actually doesn't quite take them out there. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to use a shield in this matchup. Doesn't really matter as the opponent has already used one of their shields. But still, Crocolore has such a dominant matchup there that it's not ideal. We're going to go for a Disarming Voice. The opponent is going to no shield that. They're going to over farm just a little bit here. Not too much, but this is going to be an area release. It does take out the Crocolore. But we can just wait out the switch slot. Come in with the Galarian and Weezing. And they will, make it, make, uh, they will make it to another charge move before we make it to the play rough. Airy Lace is not going to deal that much damage though, and they actually core broken by the Galarian Weezing. We can now go for a play rough, grab the final shield from 
the Medicham, and the safe play here is just to shield this up. The opponent is going to be going for an Ice Punch, grabs my final shield, but that's fine. We're going to throw the Play Rough immediately. Play Rough is barely not enough to take them out there. One more Fairy Wind does the job, and now we can come in with the Ludicolo. Doesn't matter that they've got an Airy Lace here, as it's not going to be enough damage to even two-shot us there. So the opponent recognizes that, and they just concede the match. So GG's to the opponent there, internet's going to see Galarian wheezing into S Cavalier, so possibly one of the worst leads we've actually seen today, but even then we're just going to swap here, we actually get a full incinerate in as we swap, because we swapped out one turn before they made it to the draw run, that was intentional, because incinerate's going to do like basically half the health of that S Cavalier, which is what I wanted, although unfortunately what I didn't want is to be aligned to a Carbink and being stuck in this matchup, it's probably the worst thing that a Crocolore can see, as unfortunately Incinerate and Crunch are both resisted, but we do make it to three disarming voices, which is very nice, as what this will do is put them into a play rough range. So here they actually don't throw straight away, which is huge for me, because we're just one fast move away from the play rough, and we grab a shield from the carbink. At this point, I'm going to no shield as they have to go for rock side. We're then going to swap into our Ludicolo, catch the next rock side, and I will be able to go for a full barrel farm down. So the opponent swaps into their S Cavalier, but I will outpace them to the charge route before the opponent makes it to a potential Mega Horn. Scald is going to be taking out the S Cavalier, and they come in with a Jellicent. Now, honestly, this is a positive matchup for us, but we're so low in health, this is actually looking quite scary. We go for the Leaf Storm, and it is shielded by the opponent. Now, at this point, my only win condition is calling a Surf Bait, and the opponent goes for that bait which is huge for me but we are debuffed in our attack so at least Storm won't quite take them out here what I need them to do is swap out and they do exactly that which is huge because now we can come in get the fairy wind farm down and I'm actually just going to go for a hyper beam bm I know least Storm will easily one shot them so might as well full send the double resisted nuke that does very little damage there the opponent's probably baffled about my decisions there but they go for the surf takes out the wheezing but it doesn't matter at least Storm will of course be taking out the Jellison, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there, into the next game, we see Weezing into another positive lead, Medicham, so we can only beat what's in front of us, that's all I'm going to say. They're going to swap into Shadow Swamper, of course, this is a Hyper Beam Weezing showcase, so we're trying to full send it, unfortunately, it does grab a shield. We swap there, trying to catch the Hydro Cannon, and we've already seen one Sludge Wave Shadow Swamper, so I'm actually going to shield this up. They go for the Earthquake there, so now, of course, I don't need to shield, and I can actually considerably over farm in this matchup, so I'm going to farm to essentially 100 energy here. As they go for the Earthquake, we're like maybe one, for, uh, one energy away from 100 energy there. We go for for the scold, taking them out, and we are going to see the Medicham coming back in. Honestly, I couldn't remember how much energy they had when they swapped out, so we go for two bubbles, then go for a Leaf Storm. The opponent used their final shield. We're now going to come in with the Weezing. They swap into Registeel, and unfortunately for the opponent, we are just hard countering them right now. We can very easily no shield this. The opponent is going to go for a Zap Cannon. It's not going to one shot us, but it does debuff our attack, which isn't ideal, but we go for a crunch and we drop their defense, so it doesn't really matter there. We're now going to go for a second crunch, and what we're going to do is undercharge this. This way, the opponent can either throw their energy straight away, which they are going to do, and what's that? what that's going to do is allow us to come in with the Weezing and get a huge resisted Fairy Wind farm down up against the Registeel. And at this point, we can just safely shield this up. If they are running Psychic, which they were, we do correctly shield that up. And now Play Rough is going to hit for super effective damage. It will be enough to take out the Medicham, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there, into the next game we see Weezing into Altaria. So yet another very positive lead matchup for the Weezing. They might be expecting us to be running overheat and brutal swings. So they might no shield the first charge move, so we go for the play rough. The opponent does let that go through, and then they swap into a Skarmory, and once again, we're just hard countering these opponents. Not a lot they can do, in all honesty. I am going to respect the damage here. The opponent is going to bait with a Sky Attack. Doesn't really matter, as we will come out of this matchup with Disarming Voice loaded. So even if they come back in with the Altaria, we can either throw it straight away or realize that we will live a Sky Attack and go for the extra Incinerate. But unfortunately, I just didn't get that fast move through, which is a bit annoying. But it doesn't matter. The opponent also goes for a Resisted Moonblast for some reason. They do debuff my attack, but doesn't make a difference. We're going to take them out with the Disarming Voice. And now we go for a Crunch here. This is their third and final Pokemon. They can't swap out and we get a debuff with that crunch. So now we can just go in with our Weezing, go for a Play Rough, grab the first shield from the opponent. They're going to over farm here, allowing me to make it to yet another Play Rough. Play Rough 
is going to be no shielded by the opponent and at this point this is game over the opponent will be going for a surf doesn't quite take us out there so they do get one extra sparks worth of energy but we can just safely no shield the first charge move nothing will take us out and we can go for a resisted bubble farm down up against the lantern and i'm able to take that game so GG to the opponent there, another 5-0 into next battle, we see Weezing into Lantern, so finally not a dominant lead matchup for us, but it is sort of neutral. We're going to stay in here because of course I don't want my Crocolore aligned to the Lantern. They're going to go for a Surf and we are once again just going to full send the Hyper Beam here. Unfortunately a lot of bulky Pokemon in the Great League meta, so that doesn't quite one shot them. I'm going to swap, I tried to catch a Surf, but that heavily backfires as the opponent banks a ton of energy and then swaps into Mandibuzz which is a pretty good response to Ludicolo, but we do get the debuff with the Scald on the first charge move, which means we will comfortably live two Aerial Aces, since they are going to just barely outpace me to the next charge move, but that's fine. We've seen already, we can live this, and I will be able to go for a Scald here. I'm going to overfarm here just to try and throw my opponents off my counts here, and that way, if the opponent does let this go through, we might make it to another Scald before the opponent throws a charge move. Looks like they're going to have to commit to the full fast move farm down, but we get the Mandibuzz incredibly low, to the point where one incinerate will take them out and they are double debuffed so aerial ace not going to do much damage whatsoever and i realize here they've got a lot of energy but they don't have much health so i'm actually just going to go for a full incinerate farm down at this point so going to double shield here as they go for back-to-back -back surfs they don't optimize their fast move timing we're actually going to bank that energy swap into wheezing because i actually saw i think this was a mistake from the opponent but they came in with their wiggly tough for a split second i saw the typing there just before they came in with the lantern so i already knew the third pokemon which meant i could just come in with the wheezing go for that play rough and now we can go for back-to-back -back disarming voices first one grabs that final shield the second disarming voice will be taken out the wigglytuff and i'm able to take that game so ggs to the opponent there into next game we see another positive lead for the galar and wheezing and the opponent is going to stay in here. So I'm just going to fire off that play rough immediately. I do actually wait one turn just to make sure they don't catch the move. But the opponent, no shields there. Probably not expecting a play rough as it isn't typical of Galar and Weezing to run play rough. Typically, you will run Brutal Swing and Overheat. And here, I feel like this is another opportunity to full send a Hyper Beam into the very bulky Whiskash. And it does huge damage to the Whiskash. And unless they've got a hard counter to my back two Pokemon, this is looking like it's game over already. We come in with the Ludicolo, they go for a Scald, they come in with Charger Bug, and once again, another full hard counter team. That's just how it goes sometimes. I feel like I'm never on the end of this actually being positive for me, but we can now just go for a Crunch. Crunch is going to not quite take them out once again, but it's game over. The opponent has recognized there's nothing they can do. Their Whiskash is just way too low, so the opponent just concedes the match there. So GG's to the opponent there, into next game, we see Galar and Weezing into Talonflame, finally a bad lead matchup for us. And here we are going to stay in, then swap, catch a charge move, but as well, because we swap one turn early, we get a full incinerate in for free, although... You can argue that's maybe not the smartest play just because I know Crocolore is going to lose CMP in the next matchup here. So we're actually not able to get off that charge move straight away. We still end up using a shield and they have boosted their attack and have a significant energy advantage as well. So here, unfortunately, you have to go for the back-to-back -back crunches, but they do make it to another fly, winning CMP. But we have at least put them into farm down range for the Ludicolo. So we're going to wait out the switch clock, come in with the Ludicolo, get the bubble farm down. But they've got a Venusaur in the back and this is now looking quite quite scary the opponent isn't actually going to farm to a sludge bomb though so frenzy plant isn't quite going to take us out although this school really not going to do much damage either school is not even going to do half the health we come in with the wheezing the opponent makes a very nice catch catching the play rough onto their dugong which i mean doesn't really make a difference here at this point this is going to be game over for us unfortunately this will be the end to our 16 game win streak unless we can somehow turn this game around here. I'm going to shield this up. It's almost definitely going to be an icy wind, but I figured they might not shield the Hyper Beam here, knowing a play rough won't KO. So we full send it, and unfortunately they do shield. At this point, either charge move they throw will be taken out my Weezing. They go for the icy wind, takes us out. They can just very easily ice shard, farm me down, and unfortunately we do lose that game. But GG's to the opponent there, and into the final battle of my showcase at least we're gonna see a skarmory in the lead so this was actually after the win streak so i did actually fight back from a few bad leads here but unfortunately wasn't in that win streak so 
we're going to go for a Scald up against the Skarmory. And because they've got Skarmory in the lead, pretty typical to run a Mud Boy in the back. So I figured that's why they're not swapping out here. We're now going to go for a second Scald, able to outpace them to the next charge move. And since we grabbed the shield there, I'm thinking, actually, we might as well preserve the help on our Ludicolo. They full sent a Brave Bird. We're able to get the full bubble farm down. And they come in with a Vigor off. So we're going to bank some energy, then swap into our Crocolor, just aiming to sacrifice it. But we're most actually going to stay in with their Vigor off. So that's fine with me. They full send the Rock Side, dealing big damage. But I guess they don't really want to throw another charge when we're so low in health. So they let the Crunch go through. It gets the debuff, and we're able to incinerate farm them down. And it wasn't actually a Mud Boy. It's a Lantern instead. But either way, it's the same result. We can just come in with the Ludicolo, go for a Leaf Stomp. And we recognize that even a Surf won't take us out from this range. They do have to farm to a Thunderbolt. So we're going to fight. We're going to stay in as long as possible. Bank the energy. We are just one bubble away from the next charge move. And then what we're going to do here is actually just not throw a single charge move. What I'm wanting to do is force the opponent to throw their energy straight away here just to make sure they get rid of the wheezing. Surf will take me out, but we make it to the Leaf Storm in just one more bubble. And we've seen already Leaf Storm one shots the lantern, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there, now into the shoutcast of Gummy Wormian's battles. They lead into a lantern, they are running Brutal Swing instead of that Hyper Beam, so unfortunately, you're not going to see any more beams landing, but still, we're going to shoot up the first charge move here, and we are going to over farm significantly in this matchup. Now go for a play rough, unfortunately play rough and a Brutal Swing won't quite be enough damage to take out the lantern here, and they do make it to the next charge move. So at this point, going to let the second surf go through, going to go for the Brutal Swing though, so we've seen already, this isn't going to do that much damage so unfortunately it doesn't quite take them out there but we do at least make it to another brutal swing this might force the shield or it might force the opponent to use their first shield to get that spark farm down and maintain alignment we're now going to come in with the Ludicolo. We can tank a Thunderbolt pretty well and go for a resisted bubble farm down. The opponent's going to come in with a double. We've already got a Leaf Storm loaded, so might as well just full send it straight away, dealing huge damage to the double. They now come in with the Crocolore, and we are going to go for a full incinerate farm down. The opponent did farm up to a potential payback. It is the payback, and they've got a Skeledurge in the back. So this is Father and Son going up against each other. We're going for the Crunch, and for whatever reason, they let the first move go through there because they win CMP. So so they really didn't need to tank that charge move at all. But Shadow Ball will be taking us out. We were energy dry, so we needed them to let the crunch go through. And at this point, we're able to bubble, farm down the Skeleton Dirge, and we're able to take that game. Into the next game, this actually would be typically a decent matchup for the Galarian Weezing if you're running Overheat, but unfortunately, since this trainer isn't running it, we're going to swap into Crocolore. They do get the debuff with the... Uh, breaking swipe there and unfortunately we throw on awkward timing so they do get an incinerate in and unfortunately we lose cmp as we've already seen through my battles so at this point just gonna let this move go through but the opponent goes for a flame charge bait so unnecessary and what that will allow us to do is grab a shield back from the talon flame that crunch wouldn't even take them out there so bit of an unnecessary shield at this point we're now going to come in with the ludicolo where they're going to swap and basically just sacrifice the wheezing which is an interesting play fly is not quite going to take us out but they come back in with their Steelix. So here, I would have liked to see us over farm in this matchup because of course we could be running OV. Um, unfortunately, we're not running it, but the opponent doesn't know that. So the opponent then goes for breaking swipe, which we actually live and we make it to another brutal swing. That is pretty crazy here. As brutal swing will put them into bubble farm down range, hopefully, and we do get that farm down before they can debuff uh, debuff us with a breaking swipe. And now they come in with a loan of nine tails. The safe play here is just to go straight for a scald. Scald probably is going to be no shielded by the opponent but it gets the attack drop which is very nice because at this point we can just significantly over farm i'm going to shield the first charge move here coming from the alone of nine tails we are going to let the next move go through here the opponent going to go for weather ball number two they are going to over farm in this matchup and then they are going to throw another charge move we just safely shield this up i believe we've already got back-to-back -back schools loaded actually nope we're one bubble away but this time we do get there the first school coming through going to be grabbing the final shield and we can throw a second and scored immediately into the Talon Flame, taking out the Talon Flame, and we will be able to bubble, farm down the Alona Nine Tails, and we're able to take that game. Into the next game, picking up another good lead for the Weezing. This time, it's not me picking up the lead. It is Gummy Wormian, and we're going to go straight for the play rough. Once again, they might not respect the damage here. They don't respect the damage. It does huge damage. They do still get up for charge through, but that's fine. We can very comfortably live a Sky Attack. 
We might be able to go for a full fairy wind farm down, but I'm not certain that we would have got there. Still would have liked to see us over farm slightly more in this matchup, but that's okay. We take out the Altaria and they come in with a lantern. So going to go for the play rough and play rough. We've seen already does about half the health. Uh, just over half the health with the fairy wind damage, but we would make it to a brutal swing there. So the opponent does throw a charge move at the last second. Very good timing, actually. We can now come in with the Ludicolo. They swap into Medicham, and since Crocolor has such a bad matchup up against that Lantern, we're going to swap into it straight away, even though this isn't a super dominant matchup. But it is a good matchup when the opponent baits with an Ice Punch. Not really sure why they went for that. I don't think they even farmed up to a, Dyn do, uh, to a Dynamic or a Psychic, a Dynamic Punch or a Psychic there, so made our life very easy, and at this point, the opponent has probably just given up here. As we go for the Crunch, doesn't quite take them out, but one Incinerate after the Defense drop does, and we're able to take out that Lantern. Into next battle, fairly neutral lead here, probably a slightly negative one, just because Licky Tongue does win basically every neutral matchup, which is why it is so strong. But here, we're going to let the Body Slam go through. You can see already with the Lick damage, one Body Slam puts us into the yellow health range. We can go for a Play Rough there. Play Rough barely gets them into the yellow health range, and we can win CMP going for a Brutal Swing. Brutal Swing, not going to do an awful lot of damage, but it does put them into the red health range. At this point, we're going to shield this up, then come in with the Crocolore, and unfortunately, met with a Shadow. Shadow for Alligator, they're able to swap out and make it to a Hydro Cannon before we make it to the first crunch. So at this point, we just fully sacrifice the Crocolore. Certainly not ideal, and even here, this isn't a great matchup for us since they are going to be resisting the bubble damage. And yes, we do double resist the Hydro Cannon, which I'm not really sure why they baited there. But still, it's not that great for us. Once again, they are going to go straight for the Hydro Cannon. So we are going to no shield. We make it to the back-to-back -back schools, and this is only single resisted. So schooled won't be taking out the Shadow for Alligator, but they've still got both shields remaining. We're going to go for another Scald here. Scald might be grabbing a shield. No, they no shield it. I'm not really sure why. But either way, they can just go for a full Lick Farm down at this point. So, yeah, I think we should have just gone for that Leaf Storm there. Honestly, that was our only win condition. And honestly, possibly could have won there if we did land that. But unfortunately, we go for a Brutal Swing. They actually no shield that. <laughs> Some balls on that opponent there, but they're able to take that game. And now going into the next battle, we're going to see another great lead for the Galarian Weezing, leading into Shadow Dragonair. So we're going to no shield the first charge reef most likely. Body Sam not going to do too much damage here. But the Dragon Breast will actually start chunking over time. Unfortunately, we are caught with the Brutal Swing up against the Lantern. But what that does do is if the opponent does want to shield the Leaf Storm, when we debuff our attack, a second Leaf Storm would still take them out there. So it probably means the opponent is just going to no shield the first charge move here as we go for the Leaf Storm. And Leaf Storm, of course, we've seen it many times up against the Lantern, takes out the Lantern. And we will still be able to make it to another charge move up against the Shadow Dragonair. Could have made it to another Leaf Storm, but of course, School does have that chance to drop their attack. Attack, and we get the attack debuff as well, which is very nice. We're also going to come in with the Weezing, go for a Brutal Swing straight away. Just make sure we either grab a shield or take out the Dragonair. And they've got Trevenant in the back, so pretty easy matchup for us here. And the opponent is just going to concede the match. So going into the next battle, we see an extra drill in the lead. So this is not great for us, especially when they are running Mud Slap. And now they're going to come in with Macargo, which is a crazy Pokemon to come in with. What an odd team from the opponent so far, but I'm loving it. We are going to see the opponent will be making it to a charge move. Unfortunately, we're just going to have to let this move go through here. Rock Tomb will be taking us out. We can come in with Ludicolo, and these bubbles are double super effective. Unfortunately, they will debuff us with a Rock Tomb, but we're going to have to shield this up. Actually, no, they go for an overheat, which is much better for us, as they drop their own attack instead of debuffing ours, but... Whatever, that's fine. They're then going to come in with, I think that was a Jirachi. It is a Jirachi. We're going to go for a Scald. The first one is shielded. The second one is going to be no shielded as they have no shields remaining. And now we're going to swap into our Galarian Weezing. And we're actually able to outpace them to a charge move, or at least before the opponent throws a charge move. And that way, Brutal Swing will be taking them out. And at this point, it's looking like it's game over. We can just go for a Brutal Swing. This will put them into farm down range. Certainly for our Ludicolo. The opponent will throw a charge move, but it does doesn't matter. Drill Run will be taking us out, but one bubble will be taking out the extra drill, and we're able to take that game. 
and into the final battle leading into a Scrafty. So it looks like this person did also pick up a lot of very positive leads. Gonna go straight for that play rough here, and we've mentioned it already. Play rough isn't the typical move set, so the opponent no shields, it one shields the Scrafty, and then they just concede the match. So that's gonna be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know, and as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And if you wanna see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And if you want to take your support even further, you can now become a channel member with perks including early access to new videos, shoutouts at the end of each video, custom loyalty badges, and custom emojis to use in the comments. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that has already become a channel member. Your support is greatly appreciated. And with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.